Hey guys, and welcome back to Dragonborn Industries, where I'm going to be showing you this, the Dryder from WizKids Miniatures Frameworks, the new range by them that I was really, really fortunate to be sent one out by WizKids to take part in the Band of Badgers Great British Brush Off stream, which happened for me last night. So we did a two hour stream where we sat around and we painted the miniatures and we had a little chat about painting and about different things tabletop, which you can go check out on their channel now. And I'll put a link for that in the description below. However, I did a small recording beforehand of me putting this together so I could show you the build process and also how if you can do a little bit of terrain with some foam and a little bit of terrain basing stuff, you can really accentuate these miniatures and they really do lend themselves to it. So here's the build process and how I put together the base for this Frameworks Rider. With the Frameworks minis having several possible options to build from, I knew that I should start with the area that is not interchangeable on the model. For the Dryder, this was the Drow Torso and the Spider Abdomen. These bits became the centerpiece to build around. This way, as I move on with the build, I can choose later on the options for the arms and also my leg placements for when I come to placing it on my base and creating a bit of terrain to place this miniature on. This was my thought moving forwards, knowing that I wanted to create more of a terrain piece out of the base so that I can angle the mini and give it more of a meaning and dynamic look. Being on a sprue meant cutting the pieces I needed free and then cleaning up the sprue remains and mold lines with a hobby knife. A quick sand with a nail file and clean up on the worst bits is done. Something I like to do when putting models like this together is to check the placement, fit and contact points before applying glue so as not to get any glue on the outside of the model when applying glue later on. This can save any cleanup hassle later on when you get to priming that you may have missed early in the cleanup process. When gluing, I really like to use an activator or accelerator. Make sure to shake it well before use. Then, a quick spray of this to one piece, then a dab of glue to the contact points of the second piece means that when you bring the two together, the activator makes contact with the super glue and a chemical reaction takes place, speeding up the setting time of the glue from what could be minutes to seconds. Now that the center of the body is together, we get a good idea of the scale and size of the whole model for when it's gonna be complete. This is good because we get to then start cutting foam to the right size for our terrain base. Using an off-cut of foam from a previous terrain build, I began to start hand carving some of the rocky spikes and stalagmites that I wanted for this under dark style setting. For this, once I had the height of the foam, I could cut off a brick and then start carving the straight edges off, going around with a hobby knife for a more natural look. A few cuts at an odd angle to take away some foam, creating grooves in our terrain helps add to the look I'm going for here. 
With this being the basic process for creating my stalagmites, I can now repeat the process until I have a good amount of bits to play with, adding and subtracting bits as I need as we go along, trying to work our way towards what we envision being the final product. The last steps and final piece of magic to finish off that natural look is to take a small ball of tin foil, or aluminum foil if you're an adventurer from across the pond, and roll it all over the foam previously cut and shaped. This will take any of those remaining sharp edges and man-made looking sections and texture them to a more natural look. That's it for the stalagmites at this point. I'm so happy with how these have come out so far and I feel that they are ready to go to the next step in terrain basing. At this point, we now just repeat the process until we have enough of our pieces ready to go and we can start looking at placing them on the base. With this, we want to go backwards and forwards with the central body piece that we've already put together, look at the size of it, work out where we're going to have those legs, work out the angles that we could possibly put this at, and then begin to play with all the stalagmites and get them into a rough area that we want them before gluing. It's here that I also started to take a look at the possible arm options that we had. I put the mini up against the ones that were on the sprue and it aims to see which ones I think would work better between the bow, the sword, the magic spell, and choose which one I think is going to look dynamically better and more aesthetically pleasing along the base that we are creating. Now that the basic stalagmites are done and we have a somewhat placement for them, it's time to start looking at the legs of the drider. This means that I can cut them all out, put them in the order that they're supposed to be, ready for the placement onto the mini. This also allows me to look at where the legs are going to be and look at the contact points between the mini and the base for gluing later on when both parts are ready to come together. Now that we've got our legs all ready to be glued to the drider and we know the rough placement of each one of them, we can begin to add hot glue to the bottom of our stalagmites and apply them to the base. You don't need a lot of glue here, just a small dab is enough to hold these things in place. We're going to be adding some more Terrain Scenics bits to this that are going to hold it in place a bit further and we're also going to seal it later on. So a little bit is all you need.
Once more, we go in with our drider body, check its placement on the base, see if it's more centered, if it's gonna be off to one side, at the angle it's gonna be at, and then we carry on with the gluing. I did find that the Dryder's legs were a bit fiddly, and I'm used to putting together towel miniatures for Warhammer, so I'm quite used to fiddly, so it wasn't all that bad. But for somebody who maybe hasn't put together sprue models before, it could be a little bit tricky. Activator here, again, was my friend, meaning that I didn't have to sit there and try and hold the mini together into bits for too long. I could wait 10 seconds and that thing would be solid as a rock. Once more, we go in and check the placement again before applying the second and third sets of legs. Rinse and repeat with the glue and with the activator, and we can carry on the process until all the legs are applied and we know how it's gonna sit on the base. It's here where we can start looking at the contact points of how the mini is gonna be glued to the base. Spiders and drider minis, they have very small fine points at the end of those legs, which is gonna be not a lot of contact. However, I also wanted to look at this point of how the spider and drider body would be moving is if the spider were real. How do I wanna place this on to the base? Do I want it charging through the stalagmites like they're not there? Do I want the leg placements to be like inside them? like maybe it was camouflaged in, or do I want them climbing over it with that spider climb that spiders and driders have? I started looking at the angles being to one side to make this look more interesting when it hits our table, because I think that that's one of the things that really can immerse a player. And this is what it's all about, is the immersion. So I found that the angle to one side with the very tips of the contact points of the legs being on the tips of the stalagmites was this beautifully thin area in which we could have the base meet the mini. Now that the legs were attached to the drider, we can really start to see how well detailed these minis are. And it's because I noticed how well detailed they are underneath in parts that you aren't necessarily gonna see at your table. I really wanted to angle it so that they would show off some more. That whole underside is really, really gross. It's horrible and it's perfect for a spider and a drider. So I wanted to show that off a little bit. So I definitely had, a, had to find a way to angle this mini using the stalagmites as the contact points. For this, I noticed that I needed one more stalagmite and that way I could have the spider leaning to one side and rearing up like it was ready to cast a spell or attack, which meant that I also had the options later on for the arms to then be more customizable rather than being channeled down one road. I cut apart another stalagmite, repeated the process from earlier, and then gave it position on the base where now that we had the drider together, we could see the contact point between that final back leg and where that stalagmite would be. We could then make a final few stalagmites and start applying them to the base, knowing exactly where the contact points would be, where the gaps would be, and where we can break apart the flat lines and also just the bare areas on the base. This way we can make it more interesting. And then later when we're adding more of our terrain pieces, we can blend a lot easier the things that we add.
Finally happy with the placement of the stalagmites and the contact points we have between the drider and the base, I'm ready to move on to the next steps. Basing. So the base that we have is already the rocky one from the packet itself. However, I found that where the stalagmites meet the base, we want to cover up those gaps and those lines at the bottom. So I use the Geek Gaming Scenics City Rubble, and this is a brilliant piece of terrain material. It's like a slate that's been broken up and it starts with like a fine dust and then it moves up and has so many different size pieces within it that you get a real random selection, but it's very easy to get the bits that you need out of the bag or as I've got it now in a box. I begin by selecting the area on the base where those gaps are, which is all around the base of the stalagmite. I apply some PVA or basic craft glue to this area and then sprinkle on the finer dust. I then select out some more little areas, not to cover the whole of the base, because we still want some of that original rocky bits to come through on the WizKids base, but I apply a fine layer of dust to certain areas. From there, I then apply a little bit more glue on top of some of these areas and apply some of the bigger bits of slate to this. This adds different angles and different size rocks and gives us a whole different look and appearance to the base. With that then, being done, I then take some more of the fine dust and sprinkle it on and around those bits that we've just added to help blend them back into the floor. This should give the base a real natural look that is going to be interesting for both you to paint and for your players to look at around the table. So I live with cats and this is one of the things I find I have to do quite often is pick the hair back out of my terrain. But with one final placement check with the miniature and the base, we are then ready to glue that rocky bit to a larger base. Now, the rocky bit you could absolutely use on its own, but I really like the perfect circle on the bases. It's just something that I like, but also because we have that step, we can then add a few more bits of the finer dust to those circle bits to create layers and different heights in the area. Again, creating a more interesting aesthetic. I finally go around the entire outside of the circle base and run my finger around it to just clear off any of those bigger bits of debris that we've added. That way we have a nice clear circle that fits within that uh, 10 by 10 grid for the drider on a battle map. We can then move on to the customizable options. Here we took for me, I really liked the look of the spell and I thought I could do a lot with the painting when it came to OSL. So I chose to have my left arm as the spell. This is a beautiful piece of modeling. It's a really cool bit that I liked a lot. And I just, I wanted something really mystical and magical. And I got that with this one tiny little piece. I did find that with these bits, because the interchangeable pieces for the arms and the head didn't have like set positions or like locking areas, it's very easy to slip with your fingers in this fiddly bit of work. So again, Activator was our friend. However, we really did have to be sparing with the super glue here. I find that if you approach the mini with the end of the nozzle, squeeze so you end up with a little small ball of glue at the end, allow the miniature to touch the glue and then retract the miniature away before releasing the glue so that it sucks itself back into the vat of where the glue is. You can then have a very small blob of glue without having it splurge out everywhere when you press the two bits together. But yes, the arms I did find were quite fiddly. The heads of the miniature, I had two options. There was one which was quite basic and another one which was like an armor plated face with a spider on the forehead. It was so well detailed that I couldn't not go with it because it was just beautiful. 
Again, a very fiddly part to glue, but the cleanup on it was so easy. I found that, you know, you cut it from the sprue, a little bit of the hobby knife work and a little bit of a sand, and it was really good to go. And that's most of the dry dough ready to go. We're really starting to see that come together. You can see the detail on the face there and the possibilities we're gonna get when it comes to painting that spell effect and the lighting that comes off that later down the line. Now, that arm was in place and now it was time to choose what was going to happen with the right arm. And again, you get three different options here. It was a, a hand open on its own, I believe, a bow and a sword. And I went classic 80s style. I was really enjoying the spell effect. So I thought the sword would go really well with it. And that's the option I chose. Again, very small contact point for this bit and no locking piece to go together. So it is a very fiddly bit to glue. Once more, Activator is our friend again. And that is it. The mini is complete. We can see how detailed that is from the sword to the face to the tip of every leg. So the drider was all put together and ready to be primed. But there were also other little bits that came with the sprues to add to your miniatures to add more details or little flares. And one of them that I found was this tiny little spider. And in all of the pictures, it was on the driver's back, riding it around, which is really cute. But it was the right size to be added to a tiny base for me to create a second miniature from this packet. So what I really found was that you get two miniatures here. We got the drider and a spider familiar. So I decided to turn that into a miniature as well and do a base for that. Once the bases had had time to dry, it was time to seal them. Sealing is one of the most important parts of terrain basing. What you're doing here is sealing all of the little bits onto the base with a glue that is gonna stop anything from being knocked off when you're playing or painting later down the line. To make this kind of glue up, you wanna take craft glue, PVA glue, or Elmer's glue, whatever you call it, add some water, some flow aid, and some craft paint, usually black, and mix it all up together really thoroughly to make sure that that is mixed good and proper. Then we can add that to the base. Because you've watered it down and added some flow aid, it should really seep into all those nooks and crannies and cover the entire base in your sealant. You can use other brands like Mod Podge, but this was my cheap version of this. I apply it directly all over the base in a dabbing motion rather than a brushing motion so as not to knock off any of those smaller bits of slate or the dust or anything that we've put on there so far. And once you've got that fully covered, put it to one side on a piece of grease proof paper so it doesn't stick to any of your surfaces and then carry on with the next piece of your miniature. 
This will take a little while to dry and is going to be aided if it is outside or in moving air, as that helps to get rid of the moisture that then lets the glue dry quicker. Once that sealant had all dried up, I took the bases and the dryer outside and primed them up in a basic black. The dryer I then put to one side ready for the stream with Band of Badgers, but the bases I wanted to get painted up beforehand because that bit wasn't for the stream. So I found that I wanted to stay true to those under dark colours with the dark stone and then having those purples and pinks, those blues and greens, and really run those through this small amount of terrain that we created for these miniatures. To paint this, I did a lot of wet blending to begin with. I started with Darkstone, Angel Green and Alien Purple from the Army Painter range and really went to town in wet blending those, using the purple mainly on the stalagmites themselves. Once dry, I then used the Mechanica Standard Grey to highlight the stone with a dry brush, a Gene Stealer Purple on the stalagmites and then went in with a crystal blue to fill in some of those deeper recesses where we could have some bioluminescence creeping through. I then hit it up with a dry brush of pixie pink from the army painter over some of the purple and some Barahoff blue over those greens and blues that were already on the base. So the whole point of these frameworks miniatures is to give you customizable options for your enemies for your party members, whatever it is that you are creating with these models. So when I found that I had the spare hands and the head left over from the monk that I'd done, I really wanted to use those extra little bits to kit bash together a cocooned corpse to have underneath my drider. Taking the hands and head that I had left over from the Frameworks Monk I got, I then applied them to a little bit of the sprue and wrapped them up in teddy bear stuffing to create a cocooned web-like effect to add to the grimness of the Underdark. And there it is, the finished product of the base. I'm really pleased with how this turned out and those colours for me worked really well and I just found that it was really going to add something extra to the mini. Obviously, at this point in the video, I would show you me painting it, but actually that was part of the stream for Band of Badgers. So if you want to see me painting this up, you can go check out the stream that is now on their YouTube channel. And again, that link is in the description below. So go, go check out what we did. Check out the stream. It was really cool. It was a very chill session and we just had fun painting these up. But this is the end result. And I'm so happy with how this turned out. This was just such a fun experience and I've enjoyed every minute of it. And these miniatures really did lend themselves to being painted. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.